Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is not Jerry Nice Crypto. Got my boy on the line, Caleb. Uh, Caleb been in the game with me since, you know, 2016, 2017. And it's just, you know, these conversations that Caleb and I have, you know, is where the real gold is, right? I said, bro, I'm hanging up the phone with you right now. And we're going to do this on a Zoom because this message needs to get out to everybody. <laughs> So back in 2017, you know, like the, the craze was, you know, ICOs, initial coin offerings, and we were seeing, um, you know, exponential gains back then. And that was like, we saw what, Electronium, you was able to put in $100 there, pull out 1600 It was just dumb money, right? And so now there's this, um, this new version where it's called the IDOs, initial debts offerings. And so with the initial debts offerings, this is where these launch pads are launching these tokens and uh, putting them on decentralized exchanges and astronomical gains are being made. Like it's real wild out here. And, you know, Caleb's been really diving into the tech behind uh, launch pads and um, how these new companies are increasing their funding through these offerings, right? And so, Caleb had put me on to this uh, new IDO called the Meta V pad. I had to put them on mute earlier, bro. Like I said, come on, what kind of games were we seeing? Like you sent me a screenshot that was 91 cent and this thing started off at 0 0.0001. Crazy. So let, you know, let's jump right in. Let's talk about, you know, what we're seeing the trend now in the cryptocurrency market in, in raising funds. So what were some things that really attracted you to the, to the IDO um, and launch pads? I think it is hearing what people are not saying. That's the best way to put this. Because when you watch the influencers, when you watch the YouTubers, basically when you watch a lot of people, they aren't really saying what they should be saying. And I remember in the ICO phase and the uh, early on 2016, kind of, kind of some, it was like a sprinkle. 2017 is when everything just kind of just like exploded. Um, right. And remembering that time period and I'm just like, yo, like, okay, it's cool. And remember, we didn't have that many exchanges then. And the whole decentralized exchange thing, I mean, didn't even exist. So you really had just your central exchanges of where you actually got access. Everything's about access. And when you have doorkeepers and you look at the traditional markets, they have doorkeepers. So anywhere I see that there's doorkeepers being put somewhere, that's usually where the real nuggets are being hidden. And in the U.S., in terms of the ICO, what happened in the ICO phase, I think anybody who invested and speculated then, if you didn't understand the market cycles, which really weren't a big thing, all of this market cycle stuff is kind of what we follow now after what happened to a lot of us in 2017. So if you really didn't have that high-level knowledge of like trading to know that, okay, just fundamentally, yeah, my bag is 10,000. I put it's 500,000. I don't understand how it's 500,000. You know, or some people put a couple of thousand, it was like a couple of million. The returns were ridiculous. And, but people really didn't understand like how and the why, you know. And then when you follow the money and seeing this, this whole cycle, or the early stage investors are in these private sales. So, what you can pay attention to on these tokenomics of every single project is look at their tokenomics. All of them have private sales. All of them have the pre-sales. All of them have the, um, the exchange offerings, whether they're centralized exchanges or decentralized exchanges. So when you follow that cycle and you ask yourself, do I wanna be like the 99% of people who are trading crypto? I, it's not even 99, I, I believe it's even more than that. Um, right. Because the, the, it's like 99.9% .9 retailers who are just trading on the centralized and decentralized exchanges. Or do I want to be that person who sees that? Uh, what does it take 
to trade before or get access to something before everybody else gets it. Because what happens is my chances of success drastically increase where you're not looking for a hundred percent return. You are literally looking for at least a thousand minimum on the worst projects that aren't even as built up as other projects. Then on average for good projects, you're looking at least a 10,000 percent return. So when you're really looking at these things, you have to kind of change how we saw the flow of capital has changed within the last year and a half, two years. Now where you had money entering into them, that private space where the, some do one private round, some do two private rounds, just can, you see it here and, and the tokenomics. Um, some, and then you have that seed, that seed money phase. That seed money is usually your Coinbase Ventures, your Alameda, your, um, I mean, all the, all the big Binance, Gate, um, some of the private ones. I think Pomp, Pomp has his fund, everybody. They are doing the seed stuff. So before the seed in the private sale is where, is what launches stuff. So they want to get their allocations before anybody in the market, especially for some of these projects that are super legit. Like a lot of, like the game projects, they've created a 30, 40, 50 player, um, 50, excuse me, person team. Those are, you already know the development is there for that project to succeed. And when they see that, like, hey, let's just get in their seed phase. These guys don't have any real capital yet. Let's get in the seed phase. And then what they start doing is they start that private round. And so you have your big VC funds start stepping in, whether they can't, whether they miss the seed phase, they'll do the private phase. And when you look at it, by the time the retailers get to anything, these bags are already 100,000% return because they're getting these things for a fraction of a penny. And then it hits the exchanges. We see it for like 30, 40, 50 cent. We're like, oh, that's still cheap. We're excited. Market cap is 100 million or 200 million. Shoot, it still has potential because now a billion market cap is just standard now is what it seems mm -hmm. like. <laughs> you know, so- it, it's, it's commonplace at this point. Yeah, it's commonplace at this point. So you're thinking in your head, shoot, I can still 5X my money. They're thinking in their head, okay, it was 100,000 <laughs> when we got in, you know? <laughs> so, so it's like the game has actually changed. So, but the tokenomics is what I'm seeing tails on everybody. Cause you can go to the tokenomics, then it go on their, a lot, of, a lot of the projects will say who their investors are. So you can go to the website mm -hmm. for the investors and you're seeing these big investment funds or their partners, you're seeing these big partners or some of the bigger, like even Bluezilla. Is a big incubator, so it's just like a lot of these, a lot of these projects is it's like for them to succeed is a very high likelihood because they have a lot of support. And then you're looking at let's say you see like the dexes here where it even launches. I mean, those are some of the biggest dexes, and it hasn't even hit the major exchanges yet. So you could imagine in your head if you aren't even on a dex. And you're just trading like everybody else is trading and a deck for those who don't understand they're just decentralized exchanges the, um, there's usually no kyc on those type of things some of them well some of them if they they do like a blind third party kyc if you're trying to do ideos or whatnot like they they do have bridges that connect some of the dexes to do ideos but a general dex doesn't have like a centralized um authority there so those are your unit swaps, those are your pancake swaps. And then you have your, your um, I kind of know we're saying all these words, but we're assuming you know what we're talking about. For those who don't know what we're talking about, you know, the Coinbase is, are your centralized, you know, the crypto.com, that's a centralized, you know, but just not to just go off to, to, um, to a tangent, but then you look at this, look at the public sale token price. It was 0.001. And when you just wow. saw, the, saw the tokenomics, guys, the tokenomics showed that's the public sale price. So this isn't even like, <laughs> this isn't even like the seed price. Or the like price. They're, not, they're, they're not playing fair, bro. Like, like and because you got to have 
a certain amount of capital to even participate in these things. Uh, I remember you mentioning earlier, it was like 15,000 state and locked up, you know, for at least a 48 hour period to participate into, into these things. Mm -hmm. And not even playing fair. And we just explained that there's different investment cycles for these projects. And that's the public sale price. And we just saw this price at 91 cents today. So when you really look and do the math, and that was a pancake swap, but when you really look and do the math, I didn't even check Uniswap. I didn't, you know what? Uniswap might have been even more. Because it's decentralized. Right. It's all according to the, the exchange. So I didn't even check uh, <laughs> Uniswap or Wagoswap. So it could have even got to $2. I don't even know. We might want to do some due diligence to check that. But if you just do the math on this, this is, this is insane. This is the public sale. So when it hit, it hit this price and then it shot up. So this wasn't your seed. So seed probably got this is a frac another fraction of a penny. So the seed is, might be up a million percent, guys, today. So you can imagine, like, if they've seed put in, got a seed round, and you can't even see the seed holdings. Remember, when you're looking at market caps, <laughs> you got to understand how market cap is even... Uh, formulated, you know, a lot of people see what you see public, but then you see that reserve that it really is the market. Those are, these are these guys. And yep. that seat sits on the side as that price just accumulates, you know, and they have vesting periods too. So, you know, a lot of them can't dump immediately on the market, but we did see today, C5, oh, was that today or yesterday? C5 put out a message because they noticed two VC firms who are doing massive public dumps on IDOs. And now they're blocking them and they put out like a disclaimer out um, saying to not allow the two VC funds to, to participate. I think they did like, they were dumping like 97%. So which is causes massive issues in the space. Um, the rug pulls. Yeah, because that's the extreme rug pull. Um, and it's on the retailer, which causes obviously fear, but it, it they walk away with 100, 200 million dollars. You know, so it's like, if you really think about it, the liquidity, that's why they do have vesting periods. That's why they do have lock-up periods where they can't just, when, you're, when they're in that seed and that private, they can't just, a lot of them can't just pull. So they'll try to hack the IDOs and build bots for the, for the public sales. You know, which is very possible because I mean, that's what we're involved in in terms of some of our projects, what we're, what we're thinking through and what we're developing. So like this, this bothers me, you know, cause it's just like what they tell you on YouTube or what they tell you, it's not, it's not it. Like guys, like, look at this, this is what they're teaching you. is not it. <laughs> they right. How to create international entities. This legally, this is not investment advice. It's all educational purposes, but they should be teaching us guys, Especially you guys with crypto holdings, but you have at least five to ten thousand to spend, and you have these holdings. Create your international entity or in whatever country that's crypto friendly, so you can mm -hmm. participate in these sales. And if you want your friend to participate, then create your entity and then create your international fund. Connect that here to the U.S. So it make everything totally legal. Total. That's exactly what they're doing. That's where. Bomb has this fun. So they're already doing this type of stuff. So they're not teaching us that. They're teaching us wait till stuff hit the exchanges. And this is how you speculate and make your 100%. Why they walk away with a million percent? And, and then it, they come like, out with these, these coins are going to go 10x in the month of yes, January. Yes, Why? Yes. Why are they doing that? Because they're already invested in these coins and they're trying yeah. to get you to buy their bags, right? Pump that yeah. price up. And, and they'll. And they'll and the crazy thing is not to get people because people still make money. So these projects are legitimate projects. I'm not going to call out no uh, E-Trades. I'll just say E-Trades. I'll say <laughs> something crypto. You know, I'll say, I won't, man, I'm not even going to go, but you'll hear them. They'll give disclaimers. They will say, I participated in the private or the seed phase. But people don't know what that even means not to really correlate that. Hold on. If he participated in the seed or the private, what was the price of the seed in the private in some right. of these projects? 
to even go back and look at that and say, hold on, E Trades got this thing when it was, was a thousandth of a penny or a millionth of a penny. Now it's two dollars, and he's telling us he gave us a disclaimer to say, I just to give a disclaimer, I have participated, but you don't people don't correlate it because they're not seeing these returns that these guys are seeing, right? You know, by the time their vesting period, their 90 day period ends or their six month period ends, that coin, if it's a legitimate project, has a billion dollar market cap. So, what do you do? You take your 50 million out, or you take your 25 million out. You might leave five or 10 in there for your long term out of your tens of thousands you put in there or hundreds of thousands that you put in there as a VC firm or your investment firm. So this game is, is really not, and this is what I'm noticing, like they're not teaching people the real game. Like they're really not. They really don't want people to know that this is how it's really working. But a lot of these projects, they have a couple hundred million at least. And it, they're all starting the same. That's what people are not realizing. All these things you see with all these million market, these amazing market caps are all starting the same, bro. So this, right. and this this is what people should really, are these the firms? Oh, I thought I saw some venture capitalist firms up there. Yeah, I was I was jumping into them, like multi-coin capital portfolio, three arrows capital portfolio. This is how we came across this information. We started to follow the money you know, yes. seeing these big uh, investment firms and like what their portfolios were. And we were like, how are they getting access to these tokens that aren't even, you know, out yet? And, you know, we came across these type of uh, like launch pads, you know, K K300 Ventures. Uh, I've seen Almeida on here. Uh, you know, we got Winklevoss Capital Portfolio. You know, we see all of these different like hedge oh, what funds. Is we, what, 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 is Winklevoss, what does that say? They got like what Did six tokens in here. What is that? What bro? That didn't say. I hope that this, said it. This could be it? one of their um one of their uh, like oh that's the entities market entities or whatever. Oh, I was wondering what the market cap for for what their fund said for their holdings. Oh I, shoot, let me move my uh <laughs> my uh thing over. So you know we're saying like market cap of one point. Four trillion. I think this is just like the aggregation of all okay, of the market, market caps in there for their particular holdings. But yeah, but just think of it like that. If their particular holdings has a one point four trillion or one point two trillion market cap, guys, like their holdings have that. They didn't buy these things when they were a hundred dollars or fifty dollars or a thousand dollars. They bought them when they were a fraction of a penny. And as we know, something even like Bitcoin, 80% of Bitcoin has never been sold before. It's just being held. So you imagine these people are not thinking like the traditional retail trader is too. They're thinking in 10 year cycles. You know, yep. where will this thing be in 20, 30, 40, 50 years? And then, of course, they're going to like protect their principles and, you know, take a little bit of profit. Um, but it's just like, well, we'll think 10, 20, 30 years. If I'm going to sell something for a million dollars today and it's going to be worth ten trillion dollars in twenty years, that's I'm just stupid, you know. And when they look and they do the fundamental and they look at technology and adoption and they're looking at ideas, adoption cycles and everything with technology and really looking long term, they're not trying to sell this stuff because you don't have to. You can lock your stuff up or loan it out to the market and pull out the liquidity if you want to you know, for a lot of these projects. Right. So you don't even have to sell them or stuff. And then if you look at like just the, you know, total volume of these decentralized exchanges, like it, it's wild because, you know, with these IDOs, this is where they're launching on, right? They're launching on your, your sushis, your pancakes. And we saw like, even with this meta VPAT, like they had a That's whole, crazy. you know, a whole debt listing time, right? Pancake swap. Uh, yep. Wagyu swap, Uni swap, and so they stage these things out in time period so that you know people can get invested in them. Um, they also can control a little bit of you know the market moving. Um, reason why they have to have lockup periods is because of the rug pull situations that we were having. We also have like these minimum capital uh, requirements because you know that would move the market if i'm able to participate in all of these things throw a hundred dollars in there and they come out with what 
$91,000 in one day? Like, heck yeah, I'm pulling the rug. Shoot, we all pulling the rug, right? Yeah, we're all so, pulling the rug. Yeah, so it's like, you know, they have to have these things in place to, you know, really protect, um, you know, the capital. There's a lot of capital that goes into these things. And I remember, you know, just even the shenanigans when um, Binance started this whole wave of the IEOs, right, which was the initial exchange offerings, which was um, when they, the most prominent one was their first project that they launched was BitTorrent. Man, when I say that was a wave, bro, like, I made so much money, you know, jumping in after, you know, the initial exchange offering, because I, I couldn't participate because I was a, um American citizen, so I couldn't participate without, you know, an entity or whatnot in the um initial exchange offering but you know i was able to get some of these coins after they hit the market and i got a 10 next out of it so imagine what these um what these wells are doing right and just even you know i, I call um uh, caleb in my phone is um you know one thousand percent because he always identifies these projects that go you know 10x right like um, he's the one that put me on Gala Games at two cent. Was like, nah, look at this, right? Dropped it in Discord, and you know we was able to load up at two cent. And this was like, I think you probably dropped the news right before it hit Binance, and so I didn't get on the wave until two cent, and then you know eight cent Coinbase, and um, there was another list that went along with that that thing shot up to 84 cent, right? So there's still a lot of money that is even made after these um, IDOs. And so it's like, if you can get your hands on these on these projects early and hold on to them, that's where you get that, that maximum uh, potential. You know, like people are like, Bitcoin is not giving me the returns and gains that I'm looking for but it's you know the most safe thing in crypto to invest in right and <laughs> saying something safe in crypto to invest in is, is laughable at times because you know we get 40 percent pullbacks it is what it is but we see with bitcoin that it keeps you know always exponentially going up hitting you know 10 x's and 20 x's and stuff like that um but with these altcoins that are doing these ideos and stuff like that absolute insanity yeah, like it, it makes I don't know. It's been it's been bothering me for a while now, but as I kept getting deeper and deeper into it, because we're looking for just like you were saying, like we find these projects, we already know once they hit these exchanges, like the big exchanges, they're gonna do at least 100 percent return, like worst case scenario, especially valid projects. So maybe the small project, maybe 30 to 50 percent. With the really strong projects, you know you're going to get at least 100 to 10x, 100 to 1,000 percent return on your money, and that's amazing. So it's like it's kind of like a drug. It's like they put you on a subscription, and you can see like it works a little bit with a little bit of side effects. And this side effect is like you stop seeing that you're missing out on a real opportunity, and a real opportunity. Is it after they but it's way before all of this stuff? Like that's the real opportunity. So they should be teaching people a whole different thing to what they're teaching people, but if they teach people that, guess what? It cloudies the field for them to maximize their earnings. So it's just like this right here, this like to be able to look at something and be like, all right, cool. I'm gonna get in early. Anything, let's say the current cycle, anything that's gaming, any real world NFT project, even the not so fundamentally sound NFT projects. I saw one popular one right now, just popular uh, online between like just the, I guess the whole social space was, um, that just launched was Apes in Space. And you'll you see a lot of influencers back in that thing. And I looked at the graphics, I looked at everything, great graphics. Um, I'm not an NFT specialist, so I'm not gonna act like I am, but I paid attention for the last, basically the last year 
on what's been going on in the space in terms of the art wise. When I first noticed the art wise thing, it had to be like probably December, November of last year when I started noticing like what's going on in the art space there. So and my just one years of really paying attention to the art scene, you see like art projects, but when you look at the fundamentals of it, what's stronger is what happened with you was you uh you was soft today where they're launching, I think, I forgot what game it was, it was one of the major games. Now they're launching NFTs within the game. It was their first time. Uh, was it, I think it's Ghost Recon. I can't remember the exact game exactly. But when you look at that fundamentally, it's extremely sound because when you look at the space, what's happening in the NFT gaming space is they're launching these NFTs prior to the game being launched. And something like Soul Chicks has like their NFTs are going for tens of thousands of dollars now. So the game isn't even out yet. You know, they just finished their IDO uh, in November. But when you really look at when you really look at that, but then these aren't just regular NFTs, these are in-game things. So now your in-game, your in-game stuff. Can now be exchanged. You can also make money from you know selling these NFTs or the mint of these NFTs, everything. So now you have this marketplace where people who are gaming are benefiting from owning you know these NFTs, whether it's land and an NFT or you you have an actual image of something. So now the tokenomics and how these things are being gamified, like this. By far, our soul chicks, I would say, we saw what happened with Axe Infinity. This right here is, is about to be on another level of just gamification. You know, and also, and then look at the backers again. You look at the backers, the partners, look at who's investing in these things. Like these things, they're not, I don't want to say, I don't want to say they're fail proof, but when they have massive teams of 50 to 100 developers working on a particular game, and you look at their like, you just look at the venture partners, guys. Look at the venture partners. Like it's it, you know it, it's too big. You know when you have this much capital behind a game, that many developers, that talent, this project's going to be successful, right? So now you know these NFTs, you know, are going to be worth something. Shoot, looking at the gameplay, I'm like, yo, this, this low key fire, right? And if you think about, like you mentioned, Axie Infinity, that really led the whole like gaming revolution um, in the 2021 market, where it went from what I think it was like a dollar when it began the bull run, all the way up to 140 top, maybe higher than that. And this is just me going off of you know just remembering stuff on the chart, but it was like epic gains. And then the thing about with these NFT collectible games is that not only can you make money off of buying and holding the tokens for long periods of time, and you can take these NFTs, you can breed the NFTs, which means make new NFTs, uh, like new characters with different abilities. So, you know, that replay value is there. It makes you want to continue to buy the token, put that demand on the token so that you can come into the marketplace, you know, accessorize your soul chick, uh, add new features to your soul chick. Um, they also have like um, play to earn mechanics. So it encourages and entices people to play these games. Yeah, so the best the best players can breed their results and then you get money from, like it, when you look at the tokenomics of this thing, it, it is extremely addictive. So imagine the founder is coming to you with this idea and you are <laughs> the venture capitalist firm and they have all these images and everything and they have the technology you're hearing like how they're going to make money and then they, it is a, 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 a earning thing too so you're earning tokens in the game that can be exchanged for real world assets that transfer to the fiat currency like and I'm going to be the earth safe investor in this like when I first saw Soul Chick a while ago, I was like, oh my God, like how in the world do I not have some massive fun up to take advantage of this? So it's like, 
I, I think as speculators in the market, especially the ones in the US or the, the countries that aren't um, allowed to participate in just the regular IU, I, I, I would say, and again, it's not investment advice, but they're definitely not teaching us the right thing. And our focus should be as a group or individually coming together to put your resources together to legally play the early stage investment cycle. That's all I'm going to say. You know, we see the big boys doing it. So then if you're trading or technical analysis, or we're blase and blase, I mean, the being able to put a thousand dollars somewhere and your average return on a really good project is a hundred X minimum, like that's life changing. So that changes. Change. Your, yeah, it's like a hundred X, not 10 X, which is still great, but an extra hundred thousand dollars for a majority of people, even very wealthy people, if you give them a hundred thousand dollars, that's it might just be half of the price of their car, but it's still something. You know, so it's still life changing for the average person, let alone that, and that's a that's let alone that person just had a hundred dollars. Or if you're doing a fund or you're coming together as a group, you don't just have a couple hundred dollars to put in this, you can now afford to do ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars. So now, or a hundred thousand dollars times a hundred X. I mean, again, life changing money, ten million dollars. So when we see and what I've noticed. Um, I think um, uh, another big crypto YouTuber, I, I won't say any names, um, put a really good informative video out where he showed how he took, was it 30,000? Yeah, I think about $30,000 or $38 million. It was just more confirmation on what I already knew. But it was just like, right. when I saw the video, I was just like, does the public not realize what he's telling you? Like, he's literally telling you what's, how you should actually be setting up your long-term investment cycles because that was three years for me. So if I could have put $3,000 three years ago into something that I'm not speculating, I'm not watching it, I'm not trading it, I'm not doing it, and it's $3.8 million, or if I could have put $300 into something, <laughs> let's say I don't have $3,000, I could have put $300 into something and now it is now $380,000. And let's say I have all the excuses in the world and I could have put $30 into something that's now $38,000. Come on. Like, like it's, it's, but, just, it's bananas, right? Like it, it blows my mind just thinking about it. And it, you know, it makes me kick myself because I was in the whole like traditional style of cryptocurrency investments, investing, right? I was dollar cost averaging. I was buying Bitcoin. I was buying Ethereum. You know, I was buying altcoins and stuff like that over time. But like, I didn't pay attention to these type of platforms. I didn't pay attention to, you know, that, that, that mentality of holding on to something of this caliber, right? Like, you know, with my eyes now, you know, after being you know, going up, down the mountain, everywhere in between, between, you know, 2017 and 2021, this is now our new focus, right? Like Caleb and I, you know, we run a successful discord, uh, you know, we made savage traders out of people, made, you know, thousand percent gains, you know, it was commonplace at one point in time over this bull market. And we have, you know, shifted our mentality from, being, you know, full-time traders to going into that mentality of finding these style projects, buying them for the long term and sitting on them. I mean, just think about like when I was looking at Gala, right? This ROI on Gala was insane. Like if you had got into uh Gala in the initial, you know, exchange <laughs> offering, shoot, you're sitting on 33,560%. Compared to the all-time low, you would have had, you know, 1,100% jump on everybody. That's 11x, right? If I had $100 in there, I would have $1,100, right? And that's before, you know, it even hit the market and went crazy. So just imagine, like, sitting on something like this and then seeing that type oh, of game. All-time low, three, so from the all-time low, is 324,000% return. 
That is what they're not telling us. Literally. And this was a year ago. This was 12 oh, months ago, God. December 28th, 2020. It ain't even been a full 365. I don't even want to try to do that math to try to figure out if I would have put $10. I didn't say $100. I didn't say $1,000. If I would have figured out a way to put $10. <laughs> yep, just add a zero to this. <laughs> yes, guys, just $10. <laughs> One zero three million dollars. It, it's insane. It's nuts, right? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. So we see why. It, 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 just to kind of talk about wealth, we see why crypto people they don't care about no forfless. I I've been looking at you know the founder of FTX and they keep saying he's the they keep trying to quote his known wealth. At, I think what they say like. 30 billion, whatever. And mm -hmm. I keep saying to myself, what is this obsession? This is cryptocurrency. You know how, if you have regular asset protection where people struggle to see how much money somebody has. You mix regular asset protection with cryptocurrency, which has asset protection built in and privacy built into itself. These guys aren't sitting on no, no regular amounts of money. Dude probably has a couple hundred. 100 billion in holdings that's not even on the market is literally in, in the pocket. <laughs> oh, it, it's the it right on their ledger, right? Like, <laughs> that's the thing literally. I love about crypto. Like, I don't want people knowing what I got in my, my, my portfolios, right? That's like, you know, you're asking yourself to get pulled up on. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I, I love that asset protection inside of crypto. I, I, I love that anonymous factor. And that's the reason why I, I always encourage people to keep your crypto off the exchanges, especially now that we're moving to that know your customer um, method. Because now the thing is, is that people can look up your wallet addresses and tie your identity to it. And then next thing you know, you're going to get so many hacking attempts against your accounts, uh, social phishing against you, and people get scammed all the time. You know, I, 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 there was a YouTuber that's uh, pretty prominent. He was talking about how he actually got scammed, right? And people were, you know, taking money out of his account. And it's like, this is the reason why I always tell people, you know, keep keep your, you know, finances to yourself. You don't need to be out here flexing, you know, oh, I made um, $20,000 in three months. Like, keep that to yourself. I mean, if you want to say percent gains, I mean, nobody knows if you invested $10 or $2,000, right? If you want to flex something, flex percent gains. But don't mm -hmm. sit there and flex that money because we're in that world where people will find you. They will pull up. They will hack you. They will hold you hostage. So, you know, you want to protect yourself. <laughs> so, you're in LA right now, you flossing. I think <laughs> people are getting pulled up for no reason. I don't know what's going on over there. I just got hit to what was going on. I was like, how did I miss this? Like, people are just getting pulled up over to LA. Like, yeah. like what is going on? So, like, it did look at look at the circulating supply and look at the total supply. This is what we mean. Like, the, look at the difference between the circulating supply and total supply. Like, come on. Like, what is that like? <laughs> I mean, that's I what help, I can't help but laugh, but eighty percent of it is like in private. It's private, it's locked up in foundations. Um, you know, the, this is money, you know, that set aside that the public can't touch, right? And you know, sometimes you have like um let's let's take a look at at this metric holders right look just look at how many new uh unique addresses over you know the past week that's been added so people are still buying this coin in droves and holding on to it and and you mean to tell me you didn't want to get in early i mean shoot this one wallet got 15.41 percent of the total supply right and I'm, I'm not going to try to blow their spot up by, you know, walking them down on the blockchain. But if they have a KYC, you know, and their identity is attached to it, oh, I'm going to want to know who that 15.41% is. And then, <laughs> hey, look, you know, people get hacked every day, B. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I always say, you know, keep keep your, um, your money off of exchanges, you know, keep your, your finances to yourself.
and we live in a crazy world it's wild but you know i like to follow the money but i don't want people to follow my money <laughs> exactly. exactly i mean this is the craziest thing when you really look at the data and we have all these clients all these people who are giving all these statistical analyses this is like the female's content content it's like a distraction 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 you know like not it's like who do you see teaching this hey guys Stop focusing on when stuff hits Texas or changes. Create something before it hits all of that stuff so you guys can truly take advantage of the, if that, when it hit the exchange, and since the exchange hit, if it's 324,000%, imagine what the private people are got. I mean, they're sitting on 3 million percent return. <laughs> like, and, like, off of $10, that's $30 million, guys. Like, and we're not even... We're not even talking about airdrops either. Like that's a whole nother conversation. Talk okay. about, you know, that that place you don't want to go to, that dark area of your mind. I went there. So the crazy thing was there was uh, this airdrop for uh, domains, right? It was ENS. Um, this one hurt me bad because the reason why it hurt us bad was because we knew about um, these .eth addresses for years, right? And we knew about them when Ethereum was down at a hundred bucks, right? Like we could have been buying a bunch of names for like five dollars with you know um, a three dollar gas fee or something like that. And when this token took its snapshot to release its airdrop to token holders, bro, I was seeing people cash out on a domain name thirty racks. $30,000, bro. I said, never again will I miss one. Never again. Like, that was free money just for holding your name. I, You know, JeremyKnots.eth definitely locked that down. Like, I'm not missing not now one airdrop from here on out. I mean, this token got up to $86 after the airdrop. And people were just cashing out, cashing out, cashing out, life-changing money. And this was something that was very prominent back in 2017 when Caleb and I first started out too. You know, we were getting airdrops left and right. You know, you had a MetaMask wallet. You come up with new tokens every day. I just reminded me, bro. I need to figure out. <laughs> yeah, you need to get back into your your MetaMask, bro. <laughs> I know you created a new one, but you need to you need to jump back into that old one. Figure out the old old one. The money was yeah, money was yeah. distributed, bro. And, I don't know, you know, <laughs> and that's the reason why I like this little feature up here on you know Coin Market Cap, this calendars where it talks about you know free airdrops, right? And ongoing airdrops that you know Sam got one that's going on. Five hundred seventy-six thousand people participating. I bet you ten dollars. Person watching this video is not participating in any of these airdrops, right? Games pad, buy swap. Unbound. Don't ever say we never put you on to anything, right? Like these people out here, you know, just collecting like 10 sand? 10 sand? That's a how much is sand right now? Uh, four, four or five dollars right now. I think so. Five dollars. So $5. if you that that's a free 50 bucks. Just sitting on the table. Free 50 bucks. And you just click on it and tell you what to do to get the airdrop, and you just grab your token. I mean, yeah. free money, ZK swap, even ZK swap. Like, it's crazy because I haven't looked at this in a little while, and I'm literally just seeing something I didn't even notice. I didn't know ZK swap was giving. I didn't know Radio Kaka was giving. I right, shoot, I might have to get. Um, you know. like, look, they they <laughs> have the whole participation steps right here for you, right. spelled out. Mm -hmm. Create a sandbox account. Follow all of their socials. And then submit your um, ERC twenty, your Ethereum wallet address, or you know your your ERC twenty um, wallet, like a MetaMask, right? A free wallet that you can get, Trust Wallet, something like that. You can even you know send other types of ERC twenty wallets. So and then they just deposit this into your account, fifty bucks, free. You move it off to the exchange and dump it on the market, and walk away with uh, cash on hand. Only thing that's the downside to it is, you know, you got to pay taxes on that full 50 uh, because your cost basis is zero, not a financial advisor, not a tax consultant, but 
that's generally how airdrops work is that you pay, you know, the full, full taxes on that because there is a zero cost basis because you're getting these tokens for free. And you can um, go through these other ones and just like a lot of these are like solid projects. A lot of these are solid projects that are given free, free tokens. And we're, we're, we're this and, is this too, bro, because I, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, people need these free tokens. Oh, it's going I'm, in there right now. <laughs> IPOs coming up. I, I believe Unbound. I had to check that. I forgot their date exactly um, when their IDO is. Let me check that. I think it's Community Cell is in. Oh, shoot. Unbound IGO on Gamefly is basically tomorrow. Um, Solace, oh, mm, Solace IGO is coming up. Meta Gods. So some of these Unbound is dropping 2,000, 2,000 Unbounds. See, so if you, so this is a good thing to pay attention to now because the exchange rate for one unbound is going to be a penny. So it might not seem like it's a lot of money, but when something hits the exchanges, the, the DEX exchanges, because it seems like people are launching first in the exchange, and it goes to a dollar, and you got 2,000 of them for free, and it was a penny, like unbound is right now, that's $2,000. And that you didn't pay for. <laughs> you know? Like, tell me about it. free money. You know what you can that's do with $2,000? That's somebody's mortgage. Tomorrow, that's, that's somebody's car note for like three months. Like, this is crazy. I was just looking at that guy. I saw Unbound on the list. I'm like, oh, shoot. Unbound is literally about to, I mean, the white list ends tomorrow. The public sale, I mean, shoot. You had to do all basically today, the, the 11th or the 10th is the day, but by the 11th, you had to do everything you need to do to participate. But I'm a perfect example. As I want y'all to mark this, this, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna mark this so we can see this and come back to this. So, Sidus Heroes, S I D U S Heroes, is, it, you, you've seen it on a lot of YouTube channels. Um, a lot of people are talking about it because of gameplay, because of the developers, because of the graphics, because, I mean, it's just something that everybody's like, and you can play the demo. So everybody's like, yo, this is going to be like... This is uh, fine. Yeah, it's going to be the next Star Wars for the um, crypto space. They have a lot of institutional backing behind them also. Um, they've been selling their NFTs. NFTs have been setting records. I mean, it's going to be a game that a lot of people play um, just because it's going to be a really, really good game. So when you think of something like this, all right, now let's, let's walk through the process. Just like anything, um, if we find their, token, their tokenomics, is they're going to have the same thing. We have the seed, seed phase, um, and you see how these NFT heroes, you can, like, people have been, like, trading these things. Create, like, it's just the craziest thing. <laughs> so, you buy like, them on OpenSea right now. Yeah. So, you have your public sale, private sale, and then you have your, like, your uh, IDO or some game fight calls this IGO, initial game offering. So, whatever they want to call it, this is just your, it's still your pre sale. So, the price. I want us to document this today. The price is 0 0.0018. Guys. <laughs> Mark my words. Mm -hmm. What we saw with Metaverse, this game is actually more fundamentally sound than Meta VPAD. Not Metaverse. I, just, I said what we saw with Metaverse. What we just saw with Meta VPAD this game is not going in. The backing, the gameplay, like they, they, they've done stuff that a lot of gamers haven't done yet. And this is in three days. People have been talking about this for a while now. And a lot of the YouTubers that have been talking about this is the 10th of December right now. 
I want us to mark this because we can look, we can pull this segment later on. My prediction, immediate prediction, is a thousand X, not a thousand percent, but a thousand X. So a thousand X, guys, is a hundred thousand percent return. So if you put ten dollars in there and the IGO, um, that's you just do the math, you know, that's a million dollars. So that's my prediction starting out. Long term, I'm seeing at least a minimum of 1 million percent return on whoever invests in this project, especially because they, you'll see the people who've been talking about it got the private sale and the seed rounds. So they got a chance to participate in the seed and the private sale. And then you see the gamers, because you'll see, I won't say the names, but E Trades and talk about it. A lot of these people talk about it. Even BB Crypto's been, I'm not going to say full names, but a lot of them are talking about these projects. But guys, they're talking about it because they got access in the seed. This, I, this just the IGO, IDO is a fraction of a penny. So they got access even before a fraction of a penny. So, Imagine what their return is going to be if the IGO can do 100,000%. So that means these guys are going to get a return of a million percent on their money. Guys, like, they're not, this ain't no SPY or QQQ returns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this mm -hmm. is, is life-changing returns, and you don't see no influencers talking about this stuff at all. Oh, mark my and words. It, and Come it back. already has 251.4K followers yeah, on is, Twitter. And the Telegram, everything that they're doing right now is insane. Like when you go to the social profile, people aren't stupid. Like they know good gameplay. When they see good gameplay, they know good games. They, they know this is very fundamentally sad. And I'm not a hype person. I'm just somebody, when I see opportunity, I'm just like, hmm. And then I see what is the foundation of the opportunity. So, okay, cool. The foundation of the opportunity is all these backers and these, all this great gameplay. I think I just saw was at 175,000 is what they're gonna start that uh, community pool at. Guys, this is your this is this is this is what's gonna get to a billion, like really fast. It's probably gonna be the first day. We saw Meta VPAG get to a couple hundred million. This is probably going to hit a billion as soon as it hits any major DEXs or any major exchanges. I mean, it's going to hit the exchange, and this is going to be on some soul chicks in this game. These are going to be your Axe Infinity replacements I mean, yep. because of the tokenomics, the good gameplay. I mean, I've dug into like just some of the fundamentals of their games. I'm like, yo, this, this is just amazing. You see, Red Kite is another um, launch pad or that people launch on. And these launch pads, guys, you have to have, all right, you can, you can see that they have community pools too. So, and it's going to be at IDO price. So this is a way that they can actually have pools for those early stage investors. And these are your, um, these are kind of, some of them are, they're kind of like your public sales without hitting the exchanges yet. So, and you see the restricted countries guys. So this is how they restrict the big money. US, restricted. China, restricted. Hong Kong, restricted. And now you see why we say that you gotta have, uh, or be a part of an international entity that can participate into these things. But once you get involved, man, listen, that that that's gonna be your, your lottery ticket, right? So, I, I really hate how in America we're limited to things that we can invest in because they want to protect us and stuff like that. That we need to be protected from them, right? Like they're the real crooks. But you know, having access to you know point zero zero one eight per token, man, just imagine putting a thousand dollars on that thing and then it go up to a hundred bucks, man. That's a hundred thousand dollars. No, greater than that. Like, <laughs> I'm over here underestimating. No, I'm like, over here like, 
Oh, no. I already <laughs> moved it. Oh, I moved the decimal over to the to the right already. One one move. I'm like, <laughs> You're talking about tens of millions of dollars, right? <laughs> like off of and you see the allocation. Like their market caps are so. Where, oh my god, so the market caps are so low. And so red cat, red kite. It's like, like when you go to see what you need. For these, you see how you gotta have allocation. All right, this is what we're talking. About. So, this is lottery base. You gotta have seventeen thousand dollars locked up on this particular launch pad to even be lottery. And what lottery base means is they have a pool and they'll wait the pool. So, it's not guaranteed you're gonna get allocated if you put money aside for this particular IDO, but you have a chance. No. You don't want to play in this 17K pool, but look what they did. They said, no lottery. You have guaranteed allocation for 147,000. You got to have locked up on their net. That's literally how they keep people out of these things, guys. Like, this, this is the biggest thing that they are not telling us, like, not telling us at all, like, at all. And you see that they'll, they'll let you know the lottery rooms are only going to be 200. Number of available mm -hmm. slots, only 40. Slot value is only going to be $50, guys. Only $50. So, okay. Again, let's break this down. Let's be very, very analytical about this stuff. So, we only have a $50 slot. We just saw what happened with a Meta, Meta VP. So, let's, let's just break down and let's do a little bit of math. So, we know a thousand percent return on that is only going to be five hundred dollars. So we know, okay, add another zero there. So ten thousand percent return is going to be five grand. But these things are going are doing hundred thousand percent return when they're launching. So that's fifty grand. So you have your fifty dollars has immediately become fifty grand, you know, for your community pool allocation. But it's only 50 bucks. So you see how they did that? So they say, okay, we're gonna have a community pool, but you guys are only gonna be able to do 50 bucks, $50. It, it's like all these walls. So even when you're participating in the IDO, they're having walls here where if you don't have real capital to really allocate to some of these things, this is just red kite. They're not all like red kite. Red kite is a little bit more. Is, this is just uh, one of them. They, the red kite is actually a lot more expensive. Because uh, it, it really just depends on where you go to try to do your, your staking. GameFi is a little bit better um, for if you're trying to participate in the Citus Hero. But Citus is on, it tells you there's launch pads too here. So you can see every, everywhere they are on their, um, on their medium. But just going down this, uh, this well again, so that means your $50 has now become $50. Amazing return. But they still put a cap on it. And they do this by these little pools. So you need this cap removed, even when you get in this game, to really stake even more money to say, okay, that means I, if, my, if I'm doing a fund, I know I can't do this fund with no tens of thousands of dollars. I gotta have, you know, a meal or a couple, or a couple hundred at least, because I want to be able to maximize whatever I can be allocated. So if the higher tiers, can allocate me a thousand dollars on this. That's what I want to do. I might have to lock up one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but that means my thousand dollars <laughs> times a hundred thousand percent. I mean, shoot, I, I I'm literally so far off better than the person who can only do the fifty dollars, even though they still try to lock up, you know, seventeen thousand dollars of their money. Like you see what they're doing? Like they they literally, I mean, they literally are playing a whole different game while we're out here for the pins. Mm -hmm. Facts. Like, and you gotta think about it too. It's like you see, like you gotta know these these cycles. So if you don't do KYC by the 13th, you can't participate. And you got and a lot of the exchanges already have KYCs, a lot of launch pads, excuse me. I wouldn't call them exchanges, but a lot of launchpads already have KYCs. So 
you have a whitelist too. So you see how they had a whitelist? So you had a staking whitelist, winners, all this other stuff. So in launch pads can be different on each, uh, cause this is paid networks. So this is this can be different because everybody does it different, but that's why you, you got to do this stuff. You got to be hip to this stuff. And and this is the importance of doing your own research. Like what people don't really realize, like the game that we just put them on, is how to really you know investigate these coins, these projects, right? You know, we took them from uh, you know Coin Market Cap, looking at you know that calendars tab, and you know typing in you know, like soul chicks or scientists, things that we, we hear about, pulling up their page, walking through it, hitting their Twitters, hitting their, um, these different launch pads, really diving into really understanding what these projects are about, their tokenomics, how much, you know, uh, these things are going to be worth at launch. And, you know, you might not be able to participate in the IDOs, uh, depending on what your country restrictions are. But, you know, when these coins hit the exchange, scoop them up. I mean, we, We've seen coins just skyrocket out of, you know, blue sky breakouts when they hit exchanges, right? Like, let's just even take, um, let's just even take Gala Games, right? So when this thing hit, um, hit the exchange over at Binance, it went from 46 Satoshis to 1,469 Satoshis, Right. If we look at the USDT value, it went from two cent to eighty four cent. <laughs> Absolute insanity, bro! Insanity. Got, you still got excuse me. You still got forty x, even though you didn't get a chance to participate in the IDO. So that's why, even though if you can't do the IDOs, where you get the hundred thousand percent return on your money, getting forty x on your money which is 4,000%, that's not bad either. You know, especially if you have $1,000 in there, you know, get 4,000% on $1,000 is 40 grand. So that's still mm -hmm. good. So that's why I'm saying that's this is how they, they, they feed you because you can still make amazing returns on these solid projects, but it also distracts you from knowing that after I make this 40 grand, let me not keep playing in this, you know, I need to start setting up my entities so I can participate and start talking to lawyers who do this so I can participate. If I'm an American citizen, I can be legal, pay my tax, do what I got to do to be totally legal, totally compliant. But now that I just made 40 grand, 100 grand, 300 grand, all of this, oh, let's say I put 10 grand in there and now my 10 grand is, is even more money. So it's just like now my 10 grand is $400,000. Well, shoot, where are you going to put that 400? That's what a lot of people do. They're putting 10 grand in something. They're making half a million dollars. And they're like, yo, I'm good now. I made my million. No, bro. Like, you imagine if you could have put your million <laughs> into projects that the standard return is 10,000% return. Like, that's what you should be focusing on. Oh, my God. Actually, if it is early. Bro, look at early, yo. Look at that. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let's have a conversation about this, right? Like, people don't understand the power of launch pads, right? Like, participating in Binance's launch pad at 10 cent. Let, let, let's go back over to Etsy. 10 cent. Look at the top. The, the launch pad happened, what, October 18th of 2020? If you would have held on to that sucker one year, $166. Matter of fact, I don't even feel like doing the math. Um, I need coin market cap to go ahead. That's and 100, do this math that's 160X. That's like, 160X that you just did at the top. At where it is right now, you are at 100X. At, like, hey, look at that. 102 thousand percent gain from launch pad and then up. from from all-time low where it got listed or well actually it got listed at 10 cent had a spike went down corrected eighty one thousand percent man get the literal hell out of here man god told whitey so this is why you have to change your investment strategy 
even if you even if you couldn't anything anytime you see an IG or ID or whatever, that's the first thing. Find those good projects, find these funding projects, see if they match up to your investment thesis for a solid project. And then go look at this. Go look at like where is Binance or Huobi or Gate or Kraken or Coinbase or any of these things are investing. Solana Ventures, uh, all these venture firms that if any of them are investing, like pay attention. And then that tells you, all right, even if I can't do the IDO, IDO, whatever, whatever, let me see, do they have a DEX offering first? So a lot of them will have DEX offerings first. And then they'll have the central offering. So even if you did the DEX offering, you still got a hundred, like this is crazy. Right now, 100x at the top, 160x. So you will be up 160,000 percent. So you, oh my god, you would have. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go stand out. I'm gonna go stand out in the cold because I'm so hot right now. Like yeah. I am mad at myself because I knew about Axie Infinity, and the crazy part was I invested in Axie Infinity and I sold it as 2x, right? Like I didn't, I didn't have the the diamond hands, right? Like I was like, oh, it's a game, it's cool, it's a fad. If I would have just held on to my, you know, couple hundred tokens I had, <laughs> man, I'm telling you now, it's wild, and you know these opportunities exist all throughout crypto, and they don't just only happen in. In bull markets, I mean, BitTorrent went ham in a bear market, right? Right. Like, right. what was it? Fetch AI went ham in a bear market. So, you know, don't <laughs> let you know when when this whole shift in Bitcoin happens. You know, like we're telling you now. You know, we're 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 veterans in this game. You know, we didn't got beat up by the bears. You know, we didn't got punked by the bulls. And it's like, you know, we know about market cycles and that things are going to turn around and. And we also have, you know, learned our lessons, right? One thing that Caleb and I had to had to work on ourselves is, you know, over trading, right? That that we had to take account uh, accountability because we were letting these things go rocket ship. But I remember Caleb told me, you know, get back in the Etsy at fourteen dollars, and I was like, man, that thing about to top out, that thing's done. Man, that <laughs> sucker went to infinity and beyond. Oh. <laughs> remember that futures trade i had open that was like 500 bucks on a 20x and i had opened it around 18 bucks and i was like man this ain't gonna dump man that sucker got up to 42 dollars and i sold it and i oh was like God. yo I yo I'll, I'll take these thousands of dollars and then that's it you know it goes all the way up to $166. Just imagine if we would have just held those, those longs we had open, right? Like it would have been just pure insanity. And so, you know, I forgot that's about why I forgot about margin. I forgot about leverage. Like I'm not even thinking about margin leverage right now. I literally just think about spot. <laughs> Game I mean, has changed for us. <laughs> and we was making money off of futures and, and margin and stuff like that and options. And then we saw this stuff and it was like, oh yeah, we have to, you know, change yeah, it's just like, our strategy. It's like and you gotta allocate correctly. I think that's what it really is. Because some people have teams, but if they're teams, if you're building a team, it's great to have futures, it's great to have leverage, it's great to build bots, which is great. You can get your one to four percent, one to five percent, one to ten percent with some bots, like a day compounded, which is amazing if you really think about it. And that's a great strategy in itself, too. Um, but it's like you really have to shift your investment strategies to like really deep dig deep into the money you're going to these conferences you're going the most important people at all these things are your developers like if you follow right. the developers you follow what stuff is actually being built and the brains because the developers have the brains where do the billions fall they follow the developers all this stuff is dependent upon the developers so if you're seeing a stronger developer group or you're in the development community you have a head start on a lot of people a lot of people aren't in the development community, so they didn't know, like, 
oh, so what are you working on? What is your team working on? What is this project working on? Are you a developer geeking out about something? Don't sit here and say, oh, the nerds. No. You used to be like, all right, what are they building? You know, you see Solana, I think Luna is killing developers. I, I think, what was it? Something just, something just, I gotta look at that list again. I can't remember the top list right now, but something just overtook Solana and current developers. I can't remember what plat, what protocol. I literally just stuck out my head. So there's a couple of protocols right now when you when you're following the developers to see like what what are they building. I have to find that 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 sheet, that little feed, developer feed. But um, that that shows you because all the builders are just following them, and that's how they're speculating. And that's when we follow money. So if you're even going deeper into your strategy, if you're saying, all right, this stuff is cool, but I'm going to go all the way to the number one, just developers. It was a developer all this stuff. So if you really, 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 really want to get ahead of the billionaires and the venture capitalists, you get to the developers and build relationships with the developers and development communities to see what in the world are they building. And then that lets you say, okay, cool. Here is 200 developers talking about this one protocol that they're all about to transition to Solana, basically. So I remember I was talking to some of our developers, and, hey guys, we start doing Solana, Solana. I'm looking at the trend, I'm like, hold on, Solana, Solana, Solana. Nobody was saying transition all your stuff to Solana in, in March and April, but I saw the trend of developers, I'm like, oh, this, this isn't natural. They're on here for a reason. And these are the guys who, they're the smartest brains in the communities. So why are they all going here? I started paying attention. And all of a sudden we saw a massive Solana pump. What was that? A couple months later. And I'm like, huh. At that time, Solana was like 10, 10 bucks, 20, 10 to 20 bucks. It was 20. Yeah, it was, it was like, 20 because I was mad at myself for selling at 55. Yeah, yeah. So it was just like, and then springtime, obviously the beginning of the year was even cheaper. But um. In, it was seven dollars. Yeah. And yeah. and this time last year it was under a dollar. Yeah, it was under a dollar this time last year. Yeah, Wild. So, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like people are like ignoring these um what did everybody was talking about? Octopus you know, he was octopus, he was telling us. So like all these ones that did the names might be crazy, but forget all that. Look at what the community is actually building. Because when you build your investment strategy out. Obviously, if you're not a developer, and you don't, don't want to create any space and you just want to speculate, you got to speculate smarter. It's, like, it's not when stuff gets on Coinbase that you ate in. Like, no, like, you got to start doing that. And that's what everybody was teaching. Or just trying to snipe on the decks is no, forget all that stuff. Start all the way and start building relationships or start going to Telegram of the biggest development communities. And then you can start seeing, all right, what is everybody building? Or is your project about to come out? Oh, they have an investment cycle here. And then you can say, oh, we just started raising money in our private offering. That's when you should start paying attention. Like, okay, they're not done with that or they're about to start. Let me now say, hey, guys, like, could $5,000 help you? <laughs> like, a lot of developers will be like, sure, yeah. And then you can build up whatever legal contract you can with them. And this is, again, it's not investment advice. This is just us noticing a trend of what's the most valuable thing in this space. It is a development. Yeah, this is our personal experience, what we've been seeing, it, you yeah. know, as we've been, you know, tied to the pulse of this market. Like, you know, we're, we're just now bringing our knowledge and information out to, you know, the masses. But we've been doing this for a long time. And we've been making ourselves a lot of money. We've been making our Discord people a lot of money. And the, and the crazy thing is, is that, you know, as we start to, to, you know, identify these trends and taking advantage of these trends, you know, we also have to remember our, you know, our basics, right? We also got to remember, you know, we do have to still lock in profits. We still do have to at least take our principles off the table. And, you know, that bear market is going to come. And that's going to make, you know, boys into men, right? Like, that, that's going to put some hair in your chest when, when that bear market comes around. But when you when that bear market comes around, you have to have that mentality. It, you know, you, you're seeing, you know, on this 
on this little ticker here, a bunch of reds, right? We're not even in the bear market, right? We're just in a correction. But, you know, Caleb and I, we see that as opportunity, right? Like we're looking at it as we can start scaling into a lot of these projects that, you know, that was on our watch list that we didn't, you know, deploy a big enough bag or anything of that sort, you know, be able to take some profits off the table, reinvest those at a later period. Like I'm pumped for the next bear market because, you know, now we know how to really tackle the bear market. Like we, we thrived and survived the previous bear market, but we were still, you know, learning what a bear market was. And, you know, when prices were dumping, red candles, you know, Darth Vader and, and Darth Maul coming out with these big red lightsabers, you know, taking you down to the crypto abyss. Like those were fearful times, but, you know, now we see those big red candles as opportunities. Just imagine with, with that with that Bitcoin drop from, you know, last week, like when, for instance, Gala Token had made that severe correction from 84 cents and went down to 37 cents, it popped right back up, right, to 58 cents. So that would have been a, a healthy gain, you know, for quick flips. And so that's the reason why it's like when these bear markets come, when these correction phases come, don't panic. Make sure that you stick to your fundamentals, get you a, a partner. You know, Caleb's been my partner in this crypto game for a long time. Kept, kept, we kept each other on the straight and narrow, you know, like I panic, he panic, not. So let's get back to, you know, thinking, right? Like we're not going to panic. We're going to solidify <laughs> positions. And so now we're in this position. It's like, yo, like <laughs> it, it's, it's smooth. It's, it's near smooth sailing, right? Because, you know, we, we trade the market up and we trade the market down, but I think we, we dropped a lot of crucial gems on them and, you know, everybody's going to have a lot to think about um, after this video. I'm pretty sure they're going to go back and, and watch this multiple times and be like, dang, these guys are right. You know, um, yeah. just always remember that, you know, this is our, our, personal experience or you know this ain't no financial advice no trading advice none of that stuff you know do everything the legal way you know get your entity set up you know work with your your financial advisors and your tax consultants to make sure that all your books are in order you know so that you can take take control and you know be in a position to um, participate in this great wealth transfer that is occurring in this in the cryptocurrency space but um you know, we're going to come, come back with more talks like this. Like this is, you know, a typical phone conversation that <laughs> Caleb and I have on a daily. Right. And we've been talking about having record these conversations for over a year now. Right. Like we just finally uh, decided to put it to Mike, right. Pen to paper. So um, we were like, we were rather say underground and build things to help people. But we were like, yo, this needs to help people too. Cause we just have too much content that a lot of people can provide, can find value in. And then you see, I'm seeing a lot of people share the same stuff. And that same stuff is getting some people, you know, returns. Not some people, a lot of people are making money from that, but they're still not focusing on the right things within that. And that's, that's where you got to be a critical thinker to really see like, okay, if I'm making two, three thousand, four thousand percent return, you know, that's good. But there's another level to this that I'm not even participating in. And my two, three thousand, four thousand percent might have made me hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, a million dollars, a couple of million. Well, it's time to transition my mindset. This is like anything. If you were doing house flipping or wholesaling houses, you kind of look and you see anything like, okay, why am I not doing multifamily apartments, a couple hundred units, a couple thousand units? And then after a while, you look and see like, why am I not building the skyscraper? Why isn't my fun not building the skyscrapers and building the blocks? Like, and then you start saying, well, why is my fun not building the cities? Like, <laughs> like, like, like you start like, it's, there's a level of everything that you guys, you got to ask humility. It has to keep your mind saying, oh, all right, this is cool. You know, got my little land ball, build my little wholesale house flipping boom, 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 and then you look and say, okay, I don't own 5,000 apartment units. And then you say, shoot, I don't own 20 skyscrapers. Like, 
you like it's just like you, you gotta you have to have some level of clarity and humility to see that all of these things have patterns. And you probably saw us shaking our head in here because I don't feel stupid per se, but I'm over here like, yo, I know when I wasn't focusing on the right things. And I know mm -hmm. I have not been focusing on the right things. So that's why I keep shaking my head like, yo, like when we look at the data, we're like, this is insane. Just like, this is insane. Like we could have just speculated on a little bit of money. And it's not, some people are like, oh, I don't have all this money in the world. But you have a, a couple friends that at least have five to twenty dollars each that you say, "Hey guys, this, this is, again is not investment advice. I'm not go and get your whole legal consultant and all this. Set your LLCs up. Do whatever you gotta do. There's people to help you with that. But if you can't do it by yourself. You can still speculate with a little bit of money in this game, you know. And it's just like doing the research to say, all right." As soon as this hits the DEX exchange, as soon as it hits the network, all right, let me deploy my five ten dollars. Not when as soon as it hits day one. I'm not saying as soon as it hits like get cap, get caught in that pump. I'm saying as soon as it hits, let me pay attention and see when should I deploy. Okay, this thing went up all the way. Now it came back down seventy percent. Let me start averaging in a little bit because it's not on any major exchange yet. And let me change my investment cycle from two months, one month, one week three weeks to two, three year cycles. So now I have clarity to say, I don't even intend to sell this. So if Axe Infinity drops down from a $200 all the way to $80, I don't care. I'll buy Axe Infinity at 10 cents, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's like, I'm just holding it in these investment cycles. And then obviously I'm holding it, obviously not this advice again, all educational, but take pro take profits, you know, that's a good thing. And always protect your principal. You know, like that's an amazing thing to always think in your head. So my little 10 cent, if I put a thousand dollars in there, ain't no reason on your whole thousand dollars should be in there. If you buy access to me at 10 cents, I had a lot of that. Just some of the stuff should be common sense, like take your principal out, remove your right. whole risk out of that and find something else to stake it in. I'm what do you say, put it in the bank account. I would say we find a, 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 a stable coin to stake it in and at least get 20, 30%. But you know your stable coin ain't going to go all which way. But I'm not even, again, we have said not this advice many times, but put that money, that principle somewhere where it can at least get you a percent return that's not a bank, you know, because the banks ain't giving you anything for your money. But take that principle out, put it somewhere else, and just leave it. Just have it, have it in there. Just leave it. That can just be your principal. You can have your principal account where all your original principles you've always taken out and you put it in here. So all that bag there is your principal bag. So you already know that this is my principal bag and I'm going to put it here to stake. You know, and then when I reach certain investment horizons, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put it on his own ledger, his own wallet that nobody can touch it. You know, so it's like have strategies like this where you're taking, you're protecting yourself because we're telling you this because we've not protected ourselves at times. So we know what it means to make mistakes. And we've got popped. You, yeah, we're not telling you this like we've done everything correctly. We're telling you this like, okay, these are mistakes that we've made. And we're seeing a lot of market makers and people make too. Even the hedge funds. I read the hedge fund report they put out last, this year. Uh, they, they literally showed the dollar cost average strategy, especially the dynamic dollar cost average strategy, meaning you're just buying the dips. Um, so that strategy actually got the same returns from the hedge fund managers as the derivative strategies that they had. And actually got a little bit better. So that tells you something. That tells you over trading could be dangerous, even with bots. So it's like, you gotta, have a, you gotta have a sound strategy that matches opportunity, but not over trade, but increase your investment horizon. Because you're just thinking, I'm going to trade, 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 trade. I'm going to swing, I'm going to swing, I'm going to swing. It's like, okay, that's cool. But two, three years down the line, look at the returns. Google, dollar cost averaging, crypto, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, whatever it is, just Google it and see, all right, since its inception, what has been, if I just dollar cost average $20 a month, what would be, what could it have produced? And you're going to be blown away like, what? In the past three years, well, I just would have put $20 a month in for over a three-year cycle, I would have how much money? 
and you just do that, you might not have a lot of money, but you see red, take your five dollars, your ten dollars, or whatever it is, and just you just have a correction. When fear and greed, fear and greed was just at 18. Guys, like that's when you should say, okay, let me look at this and start saying, when should I? This thing is down 30% over the month, 50% over the month. All right, let me just put out of my five dollars I might have. I, I was speaking with people because a lot of people don't have a lot of money to invest. Uh, according to national statistics, so um, but we have five dollars, <laughs> so that's why I keep saying five dollars or twenty dollars. So I was like, put that, give it up, put your one dollar here, two dollar here, three dollars. Like, guys, that alone, if you did that when COVID hit and everything dropped, you will be up a couple thousand percent. So over that year, you might have put one hundred and twenty dollars in, ten dollars a month, and now you have. Fifteen hundred to a couple of thousand dollars. That's drastic for the person who can't afford a lot of things, you know. So it's like some of the strategies, like we overthink it because we're just thinking short term. Right, right. Facts, bro. And you know, we're gonna have to drop, you know, more gems on them in in future videos because we got a lot to really oh, share. You know, from it. our experiences in this crypto market. I mean, you just saw Caleb just give you like a, a twenty five thousand foot view of things that you need to to look into. You know, your dollar cost averaging, like how to break up your buys over time. You know, seeing that you can uh, make investments with just five dollars i mean my first investment in crypto was twenty dollars worth of bitcoin and yes it doubled up <laughs> and so you know you got to think about like the the beauty about crypto is that there's a lower cost to entry than it is the traditional stock because you know you're not having to spend you know like three thousand dollars for one amazon stock you know you can you don't have to buy a forty seven thousand dollar bitcoin you can buy twenty dollars of a bitcoin right so you know, we're going to, you know, definitely come out with more of this content. And, you know, if you really enjoy this content, make sure you like, subscribe, click that notification button. Uh, we're going to be pumping this stuff out, right? Like we're going to be putting this out on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I'm even jumping on TikTok. Yeah, I'm about to become a TikToker. So, uh, you know, I look forward to future videos with y'all. You know, you're going to see more of, you know, Caleb and I having these conversations. It's going to be a dope opportunity, dope time, but, you know, make sure you all uh, trade safe out there and remember um, always, you know, practice good risk management. Um, make sure that you're doing everything the legal way. Don't trade on exchanges that don't like you, i.e. Uh, things that say United States restrictions. And then, um, you know, make sure you get your legal paperwork in line. I mean, we're currently working on, um, you know, an international entity ourselves and you know going through that whole process so we'll be interested to tell you about our learnings from um from that so make sure you stay tuned there's a lot more coming all right talk to you all later peace peace